Good afternoon. Welcome to the weekly livestock market update. I'm Brownfield Anchor reporter Megan Grebner. With us, as always, to talk all things markets is University of Missouri's Scott Brown. Good afternoon, Scott. Good afternoon, Megan. Happy, lovely fall afternoon. I know you're hitting some record temperatures or near record temperatures in your part of the country. Uh, and my husband and I went through our first tornado in Kentucky uh, earlier this week. So it's definitely a very exciting weather experience right now. A absolutely. I'd much rather have warm weather, though, than the cold that's coming here over the next uh, few months. I definitely. Um, and, and it sounds like there's some cold headed in to other parts of the country earlier than normal to uh, coming up. Uh, there's not too much for us to get into this week, but let's start by recapping what happened this week in the markets. You know, the cattle side this week, uh, live uh, cash cattle were 30 cents higher this week. Those feeder cattle markets were anywhere from steady to $1 higher this week. Uh, on the future side, the December uh, live cattle futures contract was up a little more than $5. And the November uh, feeder cattle futures contract was up more than $8 this week. Uh, on the input side corn futures, the December corn futures were down 12 cents this week. So good, good movement uh, on the future side for, for cattle markets. Uh, on the beef side, the choice box beef price was a little more than $11 lower this week. That was on some pretty good weakness in ribs and then also some lower loin prices this week. That puts that choice box beef price now uh, a little more than $70 above where it was a year ago at this time. So we have been seeing that narrow a, a little bit, uh, although still uh, some pretty hefty uh, choice uh, box beef prices. On the pork side, cash barrel and bill prices were down uh, nearly $1.20 this week. And the December lean hog futures contract was down $3.80 on the week. And the pork cat value also down, down $1.85 this week. That was uh, really driven by what was lower loin prices as well as some lower ham prices. Gosh, Scott, those cash hog prices continue uh, to slide. I, I, obviously, if everybody had a crystal ball, we'd all be very rich and own our own island somewhere. But do we anticipate this, this slide continuing, or how does this look as we look ahead to the next, the last part of this year? So perhaps we do see some slide continuing, Megan, although if you think about the news we're getting, you know, on the, on the pork side of the equation, the uh, hogs and pigs report certainly was uh, all, all positive for us. Um, I, I, I just think we have a lot of volatility still going. I sure hope folks did some risk management back uh, when the hogs and pigs report came out and got us some uh, higher prices for a period of time. I, I'm still reasonably optimistic, although um, that's not been where markets have been the last couple of weeks. Let's talk slaughter numbers as we take a look at those. Um, where are we sitting on the, the beef and the pork side of things? Yeah, so higher slaughter on both sides uh, this week. Uh, for the week ending October 9th, USDA is saying 657,000 head of cattle. That's 20,000 above where we were a week ago, as well as 20,000 above where we were a year ago. Uh, on the hog side, a run of 2.597 million head. That's 81,000 head more than we slaughtered uh, last week, uh, yet is uh, still 131,000 head below where we were a year ago at this time. Big report this week, monthly trade data, and uh, a pretty exciting August for the beef side of things, and pork wasn't anything really to shake your head at either. Yeah, that's right. Uh, for the first time, we were able to talk about uh, export uh, beef export value uh, in excess of a billion dollars, so some pretty good news on the beef side that had uh, tonnage of beef export Ports up 21% from a year ago. Uh, it's the second largest volume we've seen this year, uh, but all in all, very good news uh, on, on the beef side continuing. And even on the pork side, uh, so quantity of, of pork exported in August uh, was up 4% relative to, to a year ago, also increased in value. I, I would remind us that you know, we're getting really good export volumes given the prices that we're moving these products at, we've still seen you know, fairly good uh, both pork and, and beef wholesale values. So uh, pretty good, I guess, on the pork side of the equation, uh, despite the fact China was down pretty hard, 
in August, uh, we can thank Mexico for uh, helping uh, pull that pull us up in terms of uh, slightly higher uh, pork exports for August. I want to talk about these numbers a little bit too. A billion dollars on the beef side of things. And it's really interesting when you look at where things are going. We talk about China taking a step back on the pork side of things. But as you look at the beef, uh, they're becoming a larger player and a more significant component to these large beef exports. How important is that picture when we look at where these products are going on both the beef and pork side of things? Yeah, so I hope I hope we're thinking about this from a beef perspective for a minute. And I say, thinking about this, thinking about China. Um, you know, we know back in 2020, uh, we exported about a roughly a billion pounds more pork out of the United States, and much of that went to China. And now we're looking at 2021, where China's been taking less pork. So I guess my point is it comes in leaps and bounds. It's been a good run for U.S. beef headed to China. I, I think it's a little different story in that I think we can continue to see growth in beef trade to China as we look ahead. However, if their domestic hog herd continues recovery and, and do Chinese consumers shift back to more pork in the diet, uh, all, all those things have to be factored in. Uh, but let's not uh, downplay the fact that uh, a, a billion dollars of uh, beef export value is really good news. I, I close by just reminding us that uh, the, the more heavily we depend on exports generally, I, I've been saying the more risk we have going forward. Um, that, that's, or, or, and maybe I should say volatility and not risk because it can come both ways. Uh, higher trade that, that could still happen in front of us gets us you know, higher prices yet uh, if, if one of the biggies were to pull away, pull down in terms of trade with us, uh, that could spell lower prices ahead for us. So more uncertainty uh, as we depend more and more on both beef and pork trade out of the United States. Is there something to be said as well, seeing the strength that we saw in August for exports, knowing we're facing so many headwinds and so many challenges on the export side of things? Global shipping container shortages, port slowdowns, COVID impact on workers, all of those things seem to come into play that could set us up for a very scary and terrifying export picture, but we're still, a billion dollars is knocking it out of the park a little bit. Yeah, yeah, so I, I think this is to the, demand has to be incredibly strong to overcome all of the impediments that you listed, because they're all there. Um, and, and, and so we don't want to, uh, undersell the, the, that demand has just been, and, and demand from other countries has been incredibly strong just despite high prices, despite port slowdowns, despite labor issues. All those things, if they were to fix, which I think that only takes time, but it might spell uh, some more positive news for us on the trade front as hopefully some of those issues get worked out in the months and years ahead. And I, I know when I have talked and have been watching the news, we're paying more attention on a, on a national scale to those poor issues. And I think Congress is doing some work to address that. So hopefully we start to see some relief <laughs> sooner rather than later. Yes, for sure. And I, <clears throat> I, I will say that the, the good news is, so it's profitable in those segments. I, I often say, you know, May, uh, allow folks to have maybe some record profitability to help fix some of the bottlenecks that we have. I, I know we've struggled with this, but but again, I go put money in folks' pockets or added profitability in their pockets, and they'll be innovative in ways to try to get around, around some of the issues that we face today uh, in, in terms of those uh, port and container issues. Scott, as we wind things down today, uh, the last report, jobs report came out today, not exactly a, a, a beacon <laughs> of hope and optimism as we look at those numbers. Yeah, that's, that's, that's correct. We didn't get a lot of great news there. Uh, you know, pre-polling pre would have suggested we were going to add a half a million jobs in this report. Um, however, uh, BLS reported today, we're only up 194,000. Uh, 
uh, jobs in September relative to August. So a lot weaker than uh, many were expecting. Uh, I guess if you want a little bit of, of bright news there, uh, BLS did revise the August uh, jobs number uh, and, and increased it about 101,000 from uh, what they initially said last month. So a few more jobs in August. I, I think you know we're seeing some of the effects of this COVID wave. Um, if you think about when we would have surveyed for these numbers, it would have been mid-September, uh, probably in the, at least in some parts of the country, right at the peak of the, the, the current uh, wave that maybe we're now on the other side of. So if one wants to be optimistic, hopefully the October data looks better for us again, um, but we'll, we'll wait and see what we get next month. Scott, that'll do it for this week as we look ahead to next week, a fairly busy week for us and a biggie on Tuesday. That's right. So we're going to get USDA to give us uh, their October uh, uh, WASD report to, just to see what uh, they're saying in terms of uh, yields, especially for corn and soybeans, will be important. Uh, we, we also get retail prices next week, and we finish next week uh, looking at consumer sentiment. Sounds great. I think next week it'll give us an opportunity to talk a little bit about harvest um and what that means potentially on the input side of things for livestock producers looking ahead to 2022 and beyond i look forward to next week megan i will probably be back in a field again if the weather cooperates so i will see you outside that sounds good megan all right so every weekly livestock market update delivered to your email box every saturday morning go to brownfieldagnews.com you can also submit questions and comments there and for podcasts while you're in the cab of the combine, tractor, or your truck, go to brownfieldagnews.com slash podcast. Have a great weekend. I'm Megan Grabner for Brownfield.